Hey y'all, this is Whitney, and welcome back to another episode of Spastic Chatter. Spastic Chatter is a platform meant to feature those in the cerebral palsy community, and I get together weekly with individuals with CP, like myself, to have a kind of uncensored chat, if you will, about what it's like living with this type of disability. And for this week's episode, I, I have been... And I came across this story in kind of a weird way. I, um, for those of you that don't know, I, I, I like tattoos. I'm a tattoo junkie, and I was, I was, I don't know, I was looking at Ink Magazine or something, and uh, Ben was interviewed like a couple years back. So I, I, <laughs> I did a Google search and found, found him on Facebook, and asked him to be a guest. So. Uh, this week we're gonna learn all about Ben and his tattoos. So I'll let Ben introduce himself. Hi, I'm Ben. Um, I'm in. Actually, I did that because I advocate. And the reason why I get tattoos is not just to get tattoos. Is because usually when you have a disability, people see your chair first, and they don't know how to interact with you, and they kind of kind of shy a little bit. So I get tattoos to kind of break the mold and kind of give people a conversation piece because they start talking about my tattoos and why I get tattoos and where my tattoos are and why I got this tattoo and why I got that tattoo. And then they kind of forget about that I'm in a wheelchair. So then it kind of necks and back and they're like, wait a second. So we've talked about tattoos. So let's talk about why you're in a chair. So it kind of opens up the, the interaction between me and that individual and talking about my disability and educating them about disability. Yeah, and that's exactly, that's kind of exactly why I get, why, like, one of the reasons I get tattoos, besides the point of being, like, an interlin junkie, like, um, the people that, the people, like, people that stop me and ask me about my tattoos, you would never think that they would, they, it's people that you would never think they would, like, stop and ask, and they're just, like, a, it's just, like, a conversation starter. Yeah. So, how old were you when you first, when you got your first tattoo? I was 18, and then from there, I was addicted. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I was I was 19 because I was scared that my spasticity would make it hard to get in, would make it harder for the tattoo artist. But little did I, but I was, I remember my first tattoo, I was like, you can strap me down if you want to, like, it doesn't matter to me. And then they started tattooing, and like, I don't know, the vibrations of it, like, it actually puts me to sleep. Like my spasticity is not a problem. What about you? Well, I can't go to sleep. I can't go to sleep. What I normally do is my tattoo artist. He usually has um, a movie or something on, so I just sit there and watch a movie. We usually talk about music because we're normally in the same kind of music and crazy. So we talk about what we've been doing over the past few months or years that we haven't seen each other and just enjoy it. Just. I talk, I'm a talker anyway, so I, I know how to keep my mind off of it. Yeah, but it depends on how you get it. Now, some some places and some areas have made my spasticity a little worse, like on the chest, that was a little rough, but I ended up holding my breath, which made it a lot easier. It's not good to hold your breath while you're getting tattooed, but it actually made it a little easier. I was only supposed to, uh, I was supposed to get a tattoo done in three sessions because it's a whole big chest piece. And I, I said, no, let's go ahead and finish it. So I finished it in two. And she's like, man, you're crazy. <laughs> so pain of tattoos never really bothered me. Yeah, the pain's never really bothered me. Um, but I've only, but then again, I've only, I've only tattooed my arm so far because because I'm so tight that I haven't ventured out in, into the other body parts. But I'm, I'm going to eventually, I'm just covering my arms first. Yeah, that's that's a good deal because you cover too much and you forget what you want to get here, and it's just it's good to stick on one area at one time. Yeah, so, so when you, cause I I know I know there's people that are curious. So, um, when you get when you get tattooed, do you do you get out of your chair or do you stay in your chair? No, I, I actually stay in my chair and I lay it back because I have the tilt, so I just lay it back and. Just relax, and sometimes I normally take my medication to relax my muscles, just kind of to kind of get loose and relax. But the past two tests I haven't had to do that. He said I was more relaxed than usual, and he's like, 
do. He's like, oh, here you come. It's time for me to get my work out. I had to do a little extra, little extra uh, arm exercises and stuff like that. You know, yeah. Get used to it. But that kind of hold me down a little bit. So, yeah, we've had other people from the shop come in and kind of stabilize my arms and all kind of stuff. Not hold them down, kind of keep it stable. So, everybody around here, you know, they all know me and they're all cool. It just has these shops. And, yeah, you know, there's no telling who might jump in and try to help, you know. Yeah, fun. exactly. Yeah, I stayed. I I think I got out of my chair once because it was a new it was a new tattoo artist, and he was like, "I want you out of your chair," and so I got out of my chair, and like, I'm more comfortable in my chair. So like, um, so every other tattoo I've stayed in my chair for, like, um, so you stay you you stick with one artist, or have you uh, got tattoos? No, I've had a total of well, yeah. I try to, but my artist is also working in Florida too, so he's like months out. So, like sometimes it'll take me months to get an appointment. But I have another couple artists I use. I use one out of a uh, Clipper ship out of Atlanta. She was downtown, and uh, I used her for my chest. She was really cool. So I've used I've used a couple different artists, but I try to stick with the same one. Yeah. So have you got any uh, pushback from some from someone that didn't want to tattoo you because of your disability? Uh, no. Believe it or not, I'm always cool with people, man. I just know how to educate and how to, yeah. you know, how to, it's all about educating, talking, and how you introduce them to your disability to make them, mostly, I had people want to tattoo me, like, man, I want to tattoo you, that'd be fun, it'd be cool. And yeah. I, you know, my ex-girlfriend, she had a lot of tattoos, too, so I've always been around people that, whether they're in the tattoo industry, they're always, you know, used to people with disabilities, they, they know how to tattoo them, they don't look at them any different. Exactly. That's all. That's been my experience too. And it's kind of funny because, because whoever, like they all, like I go, I go to the same, like I usually, I've been tattooed at different places, but once I find a good artist, I usually stick with them for a little bit. And I always bring them business because I'm always with friends or something. So they can double the business. So they're like, they're like, yeah, we'll tattoo you. No problem. Exactly. exactly. You always do it. Business. It's a win-win situation. Exactly. So, what's your uh, favorite? Uh, what? What's one of your? What's your one of your favorite tattoos you have? Uh, probably my chest piece because it's a girl and she's in a wheelchair and she's got chains wrapped around her, but she's underwater with a gas mask and at the top it says "Live Free." Yeah. Do you have any pictures of that on like Facebook? Yes, I do actually. I'm gonna have to go look at that. I have a, I have a, I have a. My dad drew a, a handicap, the handicap sign, but he he made the will, he made the will like a peace sign. I don't know. It's it, it's kind of. I can't. I, I wish I wish I, I would show you, but it's kind of like in a weird spot. Yeah, just but it's like. Yeah, there's a picture on Facebook I can tell you, but yeah, that's one, yeah. that's one of my that's one of my favorites. So, what about oh, let's talk about the healing process? Do you do anything different? Bec no, like, I just put in the normal lotion and the uh, normal you know aquaphor and stuff like that on it. And sometimes I don't. I just let them peel out. Just let them yeah. peel down. I was I w I've always been told not. Not to use aqua for just to let it, just to let it, just to let it, let it heal on its own and use the lotion. But do you have any on your legs? Yes, I have a zombie pinup girl in the wheelchair on my legs, and then I have another guy. He's in the wheelchair with a rocket on the back of it. <laughs> okay, so I have another question. Do you have poor circulation in your legs? No, no, I'm. I'm yeah, perfect. I have. I have poor circulation in my legs, so I don't think I don't think I I think I could do like like the hip the thigh area, but I don't think I could I don't think I could actually do the leg area because of my circulation. I don't think it would heal right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how did ink how did how did the ink magazine article come like how did you get that? Honestly, I just reached out to them. One day, my caregiver was like, you know, you need to reach out to these people because you have a story and you, you're good at 
telling your story. You need to try to get this on a bigger level because I've always wanted to do a documentary. So I've been featured in a documentary this past uh, summer and I actually sent you the trailer for it. I don't know if you saw it. But way before then, she's like, why don't you start reaching out to tattoo magazines and stuff and see what they'll do with you. So I reached out to somebody from Ink Magazine and she called me back and that's just how it happened. That's awesome. So yeah, that's how I, that's how I get most of my interviews. It's like you just have to be you just have to be brave enough to reach out because the because the worst that can happen is this that is they say no like that's not like it, it, it's no sweat off your back if they say no. No, that's how you make new friends. I mean, you interview somebody, you make a new friend in the process. So exactly. So um, what is your so wh what's one of your favorite hobbies besides getting tattoos? Uh, music. I love going to concerts when we have them. I'm always going to some kind of concert or some kind of festival or something. I'm really huge in the music. Yeah, I say weird. What kind of music do you like? Metal and hard rock. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was into the, I was into the emo scene growing up, and now I'm a, now I'm a tech, now I kind of, I'm a Texas country kind of, kind of girl. Okay. To me. Give me a, give me a, some, I like to sit a little sideways, listen, listen to some live music. Oh yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. that's what life's all about, having a good time. Exactly. So, uh, do you have any future plans for tattoos? Oh yeah, I got all kinds of plans for tattoos. I could go on for days. Actually, I want to get my whole hand done, because I have an angel killing a demon on my arm, so I want to get the hands of Jesus with the doves coming out of it with vines wrapped around it, because in the Bible he says, the vines are my people, so when the angel's killing the demon, because when you go through battles in life, it's an angel and a demon, so the, uh, if you take the heart out of a demon and the mind out of a demon, and you slash them to the head and the heart, then they have nothing to live, so that's why the angel's killing the demon, because if you remember, you got to kill your demons. If you kill your demons, you can overcome anything. It's just your mind and your demons trying to get to yeah. you. So that's why I put the angel killing you. That's really cool. So um, I'm 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 asking this because I'm curious. Because how do you think you're? How do you like? Are you, is one hand like less plastic than the other? Like, how do you think that's going to affect your hands? Like the healing process. Yeah, I don't, know about the healing, I don't know about the healing process, but I know it will affect the tattoo process because one hand is stronger than the other because I use one hand and I don't use the other one. Yeah. So I think that if I use the, if I tattoo the hand I use versus the one I don't use, it would have more control and be able to relax easier when the needle goes into my skin, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, that, was, that was one of my questions, like, like, like. I I have a I have like one hand that I don't use and then one hand that's that I use for everything. So I was just I was just curious on how the uh, how the healing in the, the in the once the needle goes in, like you said, if your asbestos and you will be like worse or like you probably have to take some like back of it before that or something. Yeah, I actually tattooed like my the top of my hand on my worst hand, like on the side, because I have both of them. I have a like a skeleton with, with a top hat on one hand, and I have Jack skeleton on the other one. And the one that I don't use, all she had to do was hold it down so it didn't jump up. But it, it oh, really? really affect me. I have a way of turning my mind off to the pain of a tattoo. It don't it don't bother me. I think about something else. We always have a conversation or music or something going, so I don't really think about the pain too much. That's, that, that's uh, cool. That, that's kind of like I am. Like, like they, people ask me if I like spaz in it or whatever. You like go, you like your, your adrenaline's going, your endorphins are going. You don't, you don't think about it. Like, I don't jump. Like, I don't jump getting tattooed. Like, no. especially if there's music going, like, you're, you're in another zone. Like, now, there are some spots, like, when I got my leg done, the girl, I mean, on my shin, that hurt like hell. And I did drop a few F-bombs on that one. He was like, you relax. He was like, you're killing my arm, man. I understand. But 
So, yeah, we had to get some help on that. But, I mean, that shin bone hurt like, like hell. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, um, so, do you have any just do you have any advice for uh, people that want that want to get tattooed or? Absolutely. Think about a tattoo long and hard before you get it done because it is permanent. It's it's on your body for life, and if you don't like it, you can't change it. So what I normally do is I think about a tattoo at least two to three years before I actually get it. You know what I'm saying? Like because once it's there, it's there. You can't get rid of it. Yeah, that's all. My, that's all I am too. And go to the right person. Don't just stick with anybody. <laughs> go to the, look at every piece of art you can because they'll tell you they can do this and this, this and this, and they can't do it. So normally, what I also do is I usually let I don't let anybody touch me unless they got five years to ten years experience. I mean, yeah. I I think it depends. I think it depends on the quality of the uh, shop also because I I have a. I have a tattoo from my peace sign tattoos from an apprentice, and she actually did it. She actually did it, did it, did a did a pretty good pretty good job. But it was it was a it was at a reputable like a very it was like a very good uh, tattoo shop that I've been going to for a couple times. So, but now that you mention it, I would I would also I would also add the uh, sometimes the cheaper the cheaper tattoos are not like I would I would I would add the you'd want to spend money for your tattoos because it's gonna be on it's gonna be on your body for the rest of your life. Exactly, exactly. And think about that one either. Exactly, you're exactly right. Yeah, because you don't want because you want you want good quality work. You know you don't want the cheapest you could find. Right. No, because I did go with my sister. We all went to the house party. They were all tattooing, and within a month, her, her, the ink was peeling off of it, and she had to go get it redone by the tattoo artist. It was just crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, where can people, where can people follow you at? You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I don't use Twitter too much, so Facebook and Instagram. What's your What's your name? What's your names? It's crazy will crazy wills, but it's crazy underscore dot making ways. That's how you find me on Instagram. Okay. And then. Um, and then okay, I'll, I'll add I'll add all that in the description. If you want to send me if you want to send me it in a message, I'll uh, add it in the description. But most, thank yeah. you, thank you so much for agreeing to be on this. Uh, for your green to be on spastic chatter, like like I said, tattoos are something near and dear to my heart. So I thought you'd be a good person to interview. Oh yeah, most of them. Anytime. Yeah. So uh, for those of you watching, if you want to be on an episode of spastic chatter, there's always an email link at the in the description, or you could comment wherever you see this video. And we're also on Spotify and Apple iTunes and iHeartRadio so you can search Spastic Chatter and listen to it as well. And again, then again, um, thank you, Ben, for doing this. No and yeah. check back next week for another episode of Spastic Chatter. Bye.